I would say 99% of the time, it's not the child not wanting to contribute. It's the parent saying, no, stop that. Mind your own business. Get out of my way. Stop helping. Da, da, da. They don't let them exchange. Right. He's got to be his own problem solver. What my job is, is how do I get him back happy again? How do I create a distraction-free environment? How do I have it to where we can be happy again? How can I pop his mood up? All right, everybody. Well, today I got a very, very unique and special privilege, especially also for my birthday. I got a very, very special person visiting visiting us for a podcast of the Social Marketing Hour. Uh, this person doesn't need a lot of introduction. This person is somebody that I have admired for a very, very long time. Uh, yesterday I was having dinner with her and I told her, um, Elena, I used to uh, know you as Grant's wife, and now I know you as Elena Cardone. And uh, without further ado, Elena Cardone, welcome to the Social Marketing Hour. I'm so happy, so humbled, so proud that you're here with us today. Thank you for giving us the time to come to our offices here. Well, absolutely. Thank you for inviting me, and happy birthday. Thank you so much. Yeah. Just 42, just getting started. Oh, yes. Right? Oh, yes. My wife told me this morning, you got to give me another 40 years. And I'm like, okay, good. Oh. Yes, sir. I'm oh, going to work on that. Oh, sure. I'm going to work At least, I mean... We're taking care of ourselves now. We're going to live even longer. I mean, I'm planning. Grant's got to live to 100. So. Exactly. Exactly. Well, Elena, there's a, as, as I was figuring out what questions to ask you, I have so many things that we can talk about to give value. Our audience is people interested in the subject of marketing. You guys are incredible marketers. You yourself are a great marketer on your own right with your personal brand. You market your brand yourself. You have a level of courage that is necessary to succeed in this environment. And that's something that I know... You know, it's, it's a big part of your success because you can get out, get out there and use the communication lines of the world to spread your message and bring attention in. What is your role in your personal brand? How would you describe that? Well, it's all based off of my purpose, right? And so my purpose is I want to restore family, the family unit on the planet. So my role in all of this is really to get that message out, but then also, how do I tie in with the 10X brand? How do I tie in with my husband, Grant Cardone? He's very rough, gruff. He can be often misunderstood, especially by females, the ones that don't understand that. And so my role can be a way for the a certain market of females or people who just don't get grant, maybe they are attracted to me and my message, and then I can bring them into the 10X funnel so that we can actually have the opportunity to partner with them or collaborate, whether it be 10X Health or 10X Studios or 10X Ventures or Cardone Capital. We have this whole umbrella of departments that we, we host under the Cardone name. So that's really my role is really how do I reach um, an entire group of people that won't find grants simply because they're either not in the entrepreneurial space or they don't understand and can't see beyond his abrasiveness, let's say. Right. So right. Ev everyone has their roles to how do we funnel people into the organization so that we can collaborate and build and expand in the future with them. Makes sense. So you mentioned something that I had as my last question of this interview. So we got to talk about that. Something that I heard for the first time officially from you this weekend was that your mission is to restore the family unit, which I absolutely love that family of four. I got four kids myself. I met your two beautiful girls. This is such an important part of our lives because, you know, for example, there's the old saying of a happy wife, happy life, but also the sanity of your kids is such an important role. It's very difficult to be on to be happy mm -hmm. with what we're doing, mm -hmm. with the game of business, with the accomplishments if the family unit is not really doing well. And it's in really bad shape in this world. So can right. you talk about that particular vision that you have for restoring this? Because I know you're already doing it. You're helping families get stronger. You're doing events to put together couples and making them stronger and get on the same page. How would you describe that particular role of yours of you want to restore the family unit? Well, exactly. And so how do you do that? Well, you have to make it work yourself. And I never want to position myself to say I'm perfect or I have it all figured out. I'm learning as I go, right? But I have my purpose there, which is so I want to be 
I'm very successful now. People can look at Grant and I and say they're a model couple. I wanted to be a model couple. I worked at that. It 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 created um, areas for like let's say if we got into a fight or an argument, I would always think, wait, I want to be a model couple. Do I want to be the couple that's fighting all the time, or do I want to be the couple where other couples can look to for stability? And so that would actually influence me staying angry at him for an hour versus a week. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? Because I would look at myself and say, well, how would other people perceive this? If, if I'm, why, why would they be inspired by me if I'm acting like this? So it would inspire me to get the show on the road. So the same thing is now with the family. So being and pulling it all together, even though it's not always easy and there's a lot of outside influences of all the stuff that is not pro the family right now that's out there. But I figure if I can figure this thing out and I'm doing a pretty good job of it, if I can figure out how do we get the kids involved, how do we indoctrinate them into Team Cardone and Team Cardone helps people and wants to make a difference for the better. And this is how we do it. And this is the role that you can play in this mission. You can do 10x kids and you can educate kids on having a purpose and doing something and not getting lost and talking about how TikTok is not the answer and you're actually more depressed when you put in those hours on mm. TikTok versus actually producing, making sales calls, doing the work, coming together as a team. So I've allowed the children to exchange with us. They've been provided an amazing life. We mm. fly tra private, we travel all across the globe. They get to have experiences and whatnot. But None of that can ruin the child as long as the child gets to exchange and participate. And most of the time, I would say 99% of the time, it's not the child not wanting to contribute. It's the parent saying, no, stop that. Mind your own business. Get out of my way. Stop helping. Da, da, da. They don't let them exchange. So if you allow them to be on board and exchange, then they feel good because the work is the basis of morale. Right. Like you feel good. There's no age on feeling good. If you're competent, you can do and achieve goals and feel confidence and competency in yourself, you just feel good. Your emotional tone comes up. So the more that we can put our kids into production and give them and help them and assist them with a purpose until they can go on and become a productive member of society themselves, you know, we have to kind of create Petri dish, these opportunities for them to flourish and prosper and be a contributing member of the group. And it. so far that's been extremely successful. So our kids have always been in exchange. I've, and I don't believe in scarcity either. Just because we have a lot, I'm telling them you can have a lot. When my child comes to me and they want a new iPhone, it's absolutely, absolutely you can have an iPhone. What are you going to do? How many calls? How much money are you going to raise for Cardone Capital? How many diamond seats are you going <laughs> to sell for growth con? I give them a whole long list of ways they can have instead of can't have. But when they complete the check sheet item of lists, here's your brand new phone. And I'm happy to do it because why? They have brought income into the family. Well-deserved. Well-deserved. And they've produced that. They've earned that. So I'm never like, no, you can't have that. And you're, you're not entitled and you're just a child. And I'm going to, you know, discredit your value. I don't, I don't want to put the same messages on our children as I was indoctrinated with. That's powerful. So your philosophy is you opened up the door of opportunity, but they got to walk through that opportunity. They got to do it. it. It's not just like, uh, you know, here you go. The entire world is accessible, whatever you want it in right. the world. Because that's not, that's not fun either. You know, if you want to have freedom, there has to be barriers and challenges. If somebody is given everything, can you imagine a more miserable state for mankind? Like if you could have everything at the tip of your fingers and there, there's no game. Like if, if, if there's no opposition or something I have to work through, where's the fun? Like, I don't want to sit at a table and play checkers or chess with myself. Yeah. You need, you need to actually feel like you overcame a barrier and you won. Right. So, right. They're not, they're given, and they know this, they're given gifts on their birthday and at Christmas. Mm. And they're provided clothes, but not designer clothes. They are only given designer clothes at birthdays 
and Christmas and everything else. They are allowed to have whatever they want, of course. As you know, long as they produce exactly, it. Exactly. As long as they um, earn it. I, I remember a story, uh, particularly in, in GrowthCon. This is a couple of years ago and we were in Las Vegas. Uh, this is the, it was a great event. I was in the front row and uh, Grant brought Kevin Hart. Mm. And it was an incredible interview. Loved and him. and he told a story which changed my viewpoint a lot. Uh, obviously, we have a successful family. Mm -hmm. We're wealthy. We have accomplished a lot of success. The challenge as a father or as a mother is like, how do you make people, these little people, understand that there's it's a road, theirs. there's a journey you for them, right? Remember he said, it's mine, not yours. Correct. And the story was, if you remember the story, mm -hmm. he said something about, well, I went to Disney World and I took him on a VIP experience and we went behind the scenes and we just went. And then my son calls me a couple months later and says, dad, can you hook me up with the connection? Uh, no, 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 no. That was for me. That was for me. Right. If you want to have that, you got to build it on your own, right? right. Like if you, if you want to go with, uh, with me, then I'll take you, right? But you get that experience because it's Kevin Hart, right? I love that because it's, it really too. is it's like the really creating the mindset on these on mm -hmm. these little powerful beings, right? That there's a road, it's a journey to be able to get there, right? right. It's not just like overnight, here you go, access to the entire world. Right. Because otherwise, one day something happens to us, right? And we, we did a disservice to these kids, right? Because right. now they're like... They don't entitled they don't correct. know how to do it they're disadvantaged that's so powerful yeah. so when you do a lot of seminars and you're bringing in all these people and the parents is that a big central part of the like how do you make these kids become more like the family unit per se it's a big part of it like so you are educating parent parents fathers and mothers on this is how you ensure that your kids understand the value of like being like you guys like described the Cardone team, like mm -hmm. you're a part of the Cardone team. Right. So is that something that for you got for you when you're restoring the family unit? Is that a big focus on teaching parents how to successfully raise their children? That is going to be a, a department that we focus on right now. I've done um, build an empire masterminds and I do an annual event called 10 X ladies. So 10 X ladies is my annual event, but it's, it, it touches on children, but it's, I don't have a workshop specifically geared to that. The build an empire masterminds that I help empower women about, um, our mindset, relationships, money and finance, and then design your life, how to actually make it material manifest. But yes, some of that is covered in relationships because it's not just um, a romantic relationship. There's many different forms of relationships with your kids, with your in-laws, with your staff, whatever. So that's where I kind of cover that data on the on the build an empire relationships mastermind right. and i'm sure questions come up along the way anyways. questions come right. up all the time but there has been a very big demand recently on they want a deep dive into the family they mm -hmm. want to they want to hear from the children they want to hear so we do have 10x kids that's already been launched that's for kids by kids it's grant cardone's data from Cardone University, but translated and by the minds of children, right? And so 10X Kids is going to be a conference for kids and they can come with their parents, but it's really for kids to understand things about relationships with their parents, about money, about finance, about roles, purpose, contributions, because that's not being taught right. in the school system. Yeah, and what you guys are doing with Serena and Scarlett is so incredible. I always, I always tell my wife, it's just not human. And that opens up the door for you guys to create these communities because mm -hmm. we look at you and we're like, how do you get a 10 year old to muster up the courage to get on a stage? It's courage, it's a big deal, right? Obviously you guys are an example of courage. That's, there's a lot of things that I admire about, about your husband, about mm -hmm. Grant and about mm -hmm. you guys. Courage is the one thing that I'm like, wow, this, mm -hmm. this is incredible. Mm -hmm. What an example. Mm -hmm. So I'm assuming that a part of that goes into these little powerful beings because, you know, Scarlett, you know, she goes into that stage. That's intimidating. Yeah. It's thousands of people sometimes. Right. I saw her this weekend get on stage to in, in front of a thousands plus people right. and just be amazing. It's very unique. So that presents mm -hmm. for you guys an opportunity to be like, well, let, 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 let me show you what we do, right? And right. 
that's um it's not really human it's not supposed to be like that it's right. very unique right, right. It's, and, but and it should be like that it should be human You're it right. should be but it it's almost be. like the agreement is that that's not possible that's right so you guys are disagreeing with this agreement mm -hmm. and now you're stepping into a whole new level right and what happens along the way is that you show people like us that we want to get better mm -hmm. what's possible and that pushes us up so it's a magical thing that happens so yeah thank you for doing that you guys are such an example for us yay um, thank you so anyway so um you already answered the motivation part of it so that's good i was going to ask you about that you did mention something that i that i want to i, I want to bring back uh you talked about how when you deal with grant obviously grant being such a figure that he's been for so long for a lot of us mm -hmm. for me in a big way mm -hmm. right like i've been showing up to your events Year after year, I've invested in every single thing that you guys have going on. I'm all in with your organization. So Love it. he's inspired me, right? Yep. So one thing that you said, um, I can relate to him in many ways. My speed or particle, I'm like that. I'm intense. I'm fast. I don't think about things. I commit and then I figure things out. And sometimes it clashes with people. For you sure. Know? Good news is that I'm at the top of the organizational chart. So people fall in line. I don't have people stopping me from being myself. And when they do stop me, I just go to a different relationship usually. Right. But you mentioned something. Uh, on the personal side of things, I'm interested in finding out. You said that Grant, sometimes you decide whether you want to be angry with him for an hour or for a week. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. So you do get angry with him sometimes. It's Grant Cardone. <laughs> He's my husband. <laughs> what wife doesn't get angry at their husband, right? Right. So it happens. You just get over it faster. Exactly. Because oh, you get yes. to understand oh, them. A million or? percent. Look, we're we're so grooved in. We're we're we have really formed an alliance, a partnership. We are all in on us. So there's that. We have, we're already at this point for several years, we've delineated our roles in the relationship, who does what. So it's very clear and precise when we, when we have an upset, who, who actually gets to be the boss of that area. Now, if there's an angry, you said this, you shouldn't have said that. I'm always looking at where can I take responsibility? Where, where have I done that? What is he, you know, missing on me? Where have I failed? How can I take responsibility for this? And then I look at the big picture. Look, we have goals to reach 8 billion people. That's such a massive, large amount. And we're running out of time, you know, uh, with <laughs> this body mm -hmm. to actually think we can achieve it. But I'm committed to playing that game this lifetime. So I know what it takes. I know the 10X. I've been married to him now for almost 20 years. So I know what it takes to to make something happen. It takes 10X levels of action. Right. So if those are the goals and I actually want and I'm crazy enough to think I can achieve them, I know what it's going to take. So that senior, that is the main thing. Every single time I have to come off of that point to be upset with my husband, who is my partner, right? To go take us both off, take our attention off of helping planet Earth onto being greedy and selfish enough to come back down to some drama that won't, I won't even remember in the following week is it's it's a crime to me right. like why am i taking us off when i already know what it's going to take to get there i can't afford i have zero loaf time to get where i need to go and where we need to be in order to achieve that goal so when i look at it in that perspective and from a sane viewpoint it's not worth it to me half of the times i don't even mention something because once i can take responsibility for it or figure out how to control it so it doesn't happen in the future he doesn't even have to know about it wow. i am the one that creates the environment i create the distraction free environment i am in control of that that's not him that's me so if it doesn't go right the way i want it i just need to fix it so it goes right and he behaves and acts the way that i want him wow. to do right otherwise if it can be something that's a really like a repeat offense kind of thing that is just intolerable, we'll have a conversation. But even that is is approached from a sane viewpoint. Before we sit down, it's like, look, the uh, object of this meeting is to get us back on the same page so that we can focus. My attention's gone over here. This is why I'm upset. This is what I've done that is similar to that. So I understand now, can we come to some agreement to where you can be happy? I'm not stopping you from being you, but you can also take my viewpoint into consideration. And that is literally how we fix things up and get on the same page. Have we always been that perfect? Are we always that perfect? No. I have had to like, you know, really 
grapple through this thing. But when we are in our stride, that is what it looks like. And it's that fast. I and, love it. And, 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 you know, that's what has contributed to our expedited growth. Wow, that's powerful. Love it. Um, I would be, it would be a fascinating conversation to talk about the offenses that are non, non repeatable, but we're not going to go down that route. Sometimes we have laughed so hard with Repeat you guys. Repeat is like, you know, he brought it up in the, in the, in the event, something like the driving, you think it's no big deal. The driving it's a big deal. really upsets me. Like it really <laughs> does, you know, or, or things like, you know, just to give you another one, just so your audience isn't in mystery here, because they're not big deals, but they get to be big deals when you attach meanings to them over time, right? right? right. So I'm in my house. That is my house. I am totally cool if you want to bring people over. I just let me have my advance notice. You know, it, it doesn't even have to be much. 30 minutes. Just I don't like if you bring people over and I am in my pajamas, <laughs> you know, no makeup, nothing like skimpy pajamas, like skimpy little shorts or not even, you know, the sexy kind. <laughs> I don't walk around the house in lingerie, but you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. just something where when someone shows up, I am not comfortable meeting our guest in our house in my pajamas, stuff like that. That's like repeat offense. Like that is respect my space. I live here too. respect like give me the courtesy of a heads up. And no matter how many times I tell him that, he seems He'll to- He'll do it. Don't, yeah. He'll bring somebody in. Exactly. Hi, we're here. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. You know? <laughs> so I mean, I could go on with a lot of those things. You know, I used to be the phone, right? But but you see how I can attach the meeting? You don't value my time. Or, or it could be simple stuff. These are the things that hurt families and couples, right. by the way. It's the little things. It's the truck. It's if I'm trying to sleep in the morning and I just want that extra little bit of sleep, maybe I've only had five hours of sleep. And then he wakes up and turns the lights on and leaves the door open. And when I wake Wake up! I'm always like pr trying to protect his space, and it's for me. It's who can, and it it doesn't get fixed. And then there's <laughs> the last one that I will say is when I call him, right? Especially when we travel and and I want to have a private communication with my husband. Every single time, it will be on speakerphone in front of whoever is around him, and he doesn't say <laughs> you're on speakerphone. Like what he did anyway, Serena yesterday. He did the Serena. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, we were on a does restaurant. That to me all the time. And he so put it on now, speaker. Right. So now I just apply a policy. I don't talk to him uh, on the phone about anything important. If I do, <laughs> I say, am I on speakerphone? This is classified. I don't want it to be public. Do I have your agreement that no one else can hear me? Can anyone? I, I just go through the whole checklist. And then I deliver the communication. But I take I responsibility it. for it. Not him, not... Because I used to be so angry. You're not telling me that. Da, da, da. Now I'm like, how can I go through the checklist to get what I want? So instead of trying to change him, you right. just adjust it to it and figure out a system that works for you. Yes, I've done this my whole life. And now I tell people like, and stop making things mean thing. I used to, I used to compare myself to all these other perfect relationships that I thought were perfect that are now in divorce. But I used to look up to these relationships as, oh my God, I wish that was my relationship. Because, you know, the husband walks with the wife on a date, you know, Grant walks 20 feet ahead of me now he's better right but it used to be like god i want that like the guy that's the romantic guy and i'm missing out you know like you know when the negativity creeps in and i made it mean this and that now i just don't make it mean anything i'm like grant loves me i know that right. like because i have my life with him i know he loves me stop making it mean something else stop comparing yourself and you know the guy has just always blasted through in life and he's gonna forge forward and he doesn't like to slow down and i'm in six inch heels and it's i go slow <laughs> you know so you know and and, wow. and it's weird the moment i gave up having to have him be next to me now it's like, it's weird because he's there. I, the moment I stop resisting it, he just does it. Wow. You know, but the thing, the other thing, I'll give you another example. Amazing. Like I, I, I wanted to change him. Like the, he would do ridiculous things like use my toothbrush. First of all, who uses somebody else's <laughs> toothbrush? It's just so violent. Grand Cardone. Exactly. <laughs> and it's like, you're in my space. Like you don't respect spaces, but you see, that's not really what he does. That's my 
evaluation of what he does. Doesn't mean it's true. It's just my reality on it. And then he'd put it in a puddle of water, like lay it on the sink. And it would drive me crazy. Stop doing this. I mean, I would go mad and he wouldn't do it. And the more he wouldn't do it, the more I'm like, how come I have to do all this for you? And you can't even not use my toothbrush, you know, like, it, do you know what I'm saying? And then I realized, I'm like, Elena, are you really that incompetent? Like you can't handle your environment? What is wrong with you? Like, I'm supposed to be like the senior one here. And I just realized, go buy a handful of toothbrushes, stick them under the counter. And every time he uses one, move it to his side, you know, his little sink and get a new toothbrush. Wow. I solved my own problems. I never complained wow. again. Now we have completely separate bathrooms. So as, as we grew and elevated in life, now I have so much <laughs> what we can have. I have my own bathroom, but you I know what it. I'm saying? He used to go for Starbucks. Every time we had to be at a, at a party or an event, he'd have to stop at Starbucks and we would be late. Drove me nuts. I realized, you know what? I don't want to be upset about this anymore. What can I do about it? Because he's going to go to Starbucks and we will you can't be stop 30. It. You will not stop, stop Grant. I bought Starbucks stock with my money. You know, Grant and I have our money. So Grant and I have this joke, you know, because what's half of his is mine and what's all of mine is mine. So 100%. I'm always at, so who's the rich one of the family? <laughs> And he lets me That's have powerful. that. And I love That's that. Powerful. He lets me have that. So I invested in Starbucks stock, never complained again. So how can you handle the little things in your life that bother you? And I figured a lot of those out. And it's really escalated our group, our, our, our growth, not our group. 100% because you get on because the same page. We got on the same page. And, and then I would always petty go to Petty things, right? There's yeah, small so things petty. you don't care about. I would get in fights about these little stupid things about being late to the party. I got to the party and no one was there anyway. And then I was already always embarrassed. Like I threw this big old fit that now I have to be right about. And I'd get to this party and we were even too early being late. Wow. Do you know what I'm saying? Wow. So I'm like, you know what? It'll work its way out. I'm not even, I don't even remember who was at the party or the party to this date right now. At the time it was important, but guess who is still important to me? Grant. Right. Because I see him every day. Oof. So why can't wow. I make that more important than anybody else? You're blowing me away. This is extremely valuable because this is something that again, it's just that can it create that connection. You are powerful in your own right. And then he's a giant in his own right, right? The, the level of power that you guys have combined, right. when it's aligned, there's so much more that you could do. Right. Instead of focusing on small little things, you get them out of the way, you create a system to handle something that is to an extent unhandable, right? Like there's a big bean, big guy like that. Like Grant is one of those guys that he walks into a building. You even, feel it. Even if you haven't seen him, mm -hmm. you know there's something changed in yep. the environment. He's yep. one of those guys, yep. right? Some of you guys might have the understanding of what I'm talking about, but be beings are like, you know, some of them are very noticeable. Mm -hmm. Some people will go and knock on a door like that. And some people will go and kick that door down, right? Grant is one of those that kicks the doors down. So he's very big. So how much are you going to change the way that he does things or operates if Elena Cardone can't change him, right? Like there's a way that he does his things. That's the way it is. It's funny because you reminded me of, uh, for example, my wife and I, right? Mm -hmm. um, so many similarities, Elena. It's just like the driving is also a big problem. It's mm -hmm. been a pro big problem. Like what Grant was saying about for 20 years, she thinks that I'm going to crash and I'm never crash. I always come close. Exactly me. Mm -hmm. 19 years together. And never I wanted crashed. to say, yeah, you never crashed because I was always in the car going, look out. <laughs> <laughs> but I refrained. My wife will tell you the exact same thing. Yeah, absolutely. But right? here's the hack on that, which I meant to tell the audience yesterday, but I forgot. So the hack that Grant doesn't know about, and you're the first person that I'm telling this to on this podcast, is I keep that problem in place because I could solve that problem and I've looked at it. I could drive, I could hire a driver, you know what I'm saying? And I have done that for certain occasions. But the reason I keep that problem there is because I'd rather that problem than a real problem, like a big problem. Right. So I don't want a bigger problem, even though that is my solution to problems, just get different problems. I'm not willing to let that one go because I'm okay with fighting about cars. We're not fighting about real issues. Right. 
you know, real problems. Like there's no gambling addictions. There's no other alcohol. Al drugs. There's no alcohol. There's no drugs. There's no infidelity. Infidelities. There's none of that. So I'm okay. Like we have to have a little still something. There's got to be something. A little. So I keep the little game, the, the car hack there. So he thinks it's a big deal, you know, of because course. I'm not willing to That trade makes sense. It. That's a great hack, mm -hmm. right? It's a good hack. Yeah, especially when you understand what's happening in this world. Right. And you know that there's like very big problems occurring. Mm -hmm. And when you look at your life and you see, wait a second, I managed to get, get rid of the serious problems in our lives. Oh, right? yeah. It's powerful. Mm -hmm. The other story was with the, um, with the toothbrushes, right? I always tell my wife, because it's happened in the past, like sometimes we travel and, hey, she forgot her toothbrush because... She forgets more things than I do, right? So, of course. so she we forgets have more a toothbrush. Things than all, you, by the way. you do, you do, right? So she forgets a toothbrush, and I'm like, just use mine. She's like, absolutely not. I'm like, wait a second, didn't we just kiss last night? Like, I don't understand. We produce four babies. How is using a toothbrush of mine a problem suddenly? Isn't it the same body composition that we're exchanging here? I, I, it's, that's been my reaction, right? So I'm like, just use my damn toothbrush. She's okay. She'd rather finger brush than that use my toothbrush. That is hysterical. <laughs> that is hysterical. In that circumstance, I might use Grant's toothbrush. <laughs> exactly. But I don't know. I'm kind of with her on that. I'll have to sort that out later. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Okay, amazing stuff. I also wanted to ask you a related subject. This is a selfish question that I have in regards to Grant, right? Okay. Um, does he ever get moody? Like, does he ever? I get moody, you know, so I'm always producing, right? What Look is moody? Your Tell reaction, me moody because I I'm dumbfounded. Your reaction like, already tells me, right? Doesn't he live like, in moody? <laughs> I'm so confused. Doesn't everybody see him as moody or is it just me? What is moody? Uh, angry? So, is it so for me would be like, because I get moody sometimes. So I, I'm generally a happy individual operating in life. Very grateful. Got my family, great businesses and everything. So I'm grateful and I usually enjoy. But sometimes something happens that I'm like, just stay away from me. All right. Like give me some space. And it happens maybe once every two weeks. I just, I, I tell my wife, I'll tell her like, She's it just blessed. It literally happened once every two weeks. Right. Wow. <laughs> it, it literally happened three or four days ago. And I said, listen, it doesn't have anything to do with you. All right. I got to handle myself. Just give me some space. And I went to bed. We go to bed together. I fell asleep and I'm like in the morning, I'm good. Mm -hmm. But sometimes I just want the kids to be quiet and disappear. And I want the wife to not even talk to me. Does that ever happen to Grant? And how do you handle it? Because I feel bad. I feel guilty. Like almost I'm not supposed to feel moody. And, you know, we, we got to handle ourselves. But does he experience that with you at a personal level? Look, I've been with him for so long and he's evolved. Uh, and so have I. Right. So I have to take responsibility for how am I creating that effect on him. But then I also look at life and what I'm asking him to do and what I have asked him to do. I asked him to go be a billionaire, to go walk amongst giants, to go make a difference for the better on this planet, to get us known, to get himself known. That's a big big requirement in the physical universe to go out and use that much force. So he's on phones, he's having issues, he's having breakdowns here and there. He's got fires to put out. I understand that that is going on for him. And, and, and he's, I, I have asked him to assume that. So when he walks in the door to, for me to expect that that's going to shut off and all of a sudden he's going to be like, Oh honey. And walk into my romantic, you know, movie set. Um, <laughs> of what I think, you know, cause I, I love those romance movies and whatnot. Um, it's just, it's just, I've learned how to become strong enough to deal with that. And part of me supporting him in his role is being able to have him in whatever mood he's in. I just know how to navigate around it. Either I disappear, I don't want to be around it, or I will, you know, put food in front of him or a glass of water or, you know, give him some space to kind of simmer down and then we can carry on with our lives. But I don't have to be in his space 24 seven. I don't have to talk to him about an issue that um, is something I want when he's not in the right frame of mm. mind. You know, I don't have to push myself on his space. And that is part of the support that it takes to be around someone powerful like that. Right. So when you feel that space in his universe, different, I just, uh, yeah. you just 
do your thing, separate, I do create. My, right. You got your girls, you got your empire that you're building, you got your social media followings and all that stuff. So you go and you be you, right? I go and I be me and I don't take it personally. Uh, you know, because if if there is something for us to work out, then I'm good with that. Let's do that. But if it's like attack at me, it's really about something he has going on that he has to figure out. I'm not going to I am not responsible for that. So I can see it for what it is without taking it personally. Yeah. So you never take it like, uh, oh, uh, let me find out what's going on and you keep on pushing for an answer. None of that stuff is how you operate. Like, Grant, what's happening? Tell me no, about it. No, you know, I used to do some of that and it would make it worse. I'm not, I'm not there to fix him. I'm there to be a good partner and a support system for him. And what I try to do is either help him to figure it out himself, but to keep him, you know, in, in a good mindset and in a good space. So, right. so rather than try to mire him into the minutia and the mechanics and the figuring it out and going, he might not even know what it is. And I'm asking him to look at something which might not even be the right conclusion to whatever is going on. I try not to go in that area. I'm not his solver. Right. He's got to be his own problem solver. What my job is, is how do I get him back happy again? How do I create a distraction free environment? How do I have it to where we can be happy again? How can I pop his mood up? You know, how do I get him happy enough to be able to take responsibility and start looking? Right. So if he's like in an angry space, I will try to find ways to 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 suddenly make it safe enough for him to destimulate from his environment and be himself again. That's perfect. Yeah, sometimes they don't even know what's going on. Like yeah. when it happens to me, I that's what I, do I got with no my, explanation with my with my teenager too. Now oh, because they a go teenager, for that too sometimes. Yeah, because she's going through things and harm. Who knows? I don't even need she's to 13. try to figure it out. I'm just right. I'm just not her therapist or whatever you want to call that counselor. Mm -hmm. Um, and I don't believe in therapist. I would never send her to a therapist, but I'm not the person that's going to solve her problems for her. I am the person who's going, tries to, you know, create experiences where she can pop out of that. Right. I'm trying to bring her back up tone. So I'm finding ways of distracting her by showing her something funny, you know, the, the bear that falls out the tree into the, the trampoline. Oh my God, did you see this? I'm artful. I'm skillful. She's, she can't be on to what I'm doing or, Oh my gosh, you know, she loves to cook. You know, I gotta, I brought home some stuff. Will you help me? Will you chop up the, the vegetables? I got to get her into production. I don't need to say what happened and why are you so angry and why is life so miserable everything should be perfect for you you're 13 and you got a pretty good life I, why would i do that that would invalidate right. her make her more angry when i get upset when she's kind of treats me in a certain way that you know can hurt a mom's feelings right i don't need to go affect to that and make her feel even worse for treating me that way i don't i don't want anything to do with it i know that's not her you know, whatever that is, is not her. All I have to do is pop her out of that. That is my only role, my only job. Wow. What you just described right now between how you handle Grant and his power and your kids, that's basically restoring the family unit. Because if everybody had that way of approaching husbands, wives, kids, sisters, brothers, etc., that way of understanding that we're all going for something, there's something going on, we can't always explain it. If we just understand that and we're able to give space and back away, a lot of the problems that are happening in the family unit would just not happen because a lot of it has to do with the lack of tolerance of each other or like try to impose one's ways or try to like make somebody be somebody that they're not, right? So, so powerful, I love it. Mm -hmm. you're, you are gonna do this and now you're gonna accomplish that purpose. Restoring the family unit. I love that. We need Thank to get you. it done. Yes. Yeah. So I think that you should have enough life left in that body that we should be able to look at this in a few decades. And, uh, and see if we, if we oh accomplish it. What, what, do you give me till 90? I think you are very healthy looking. Mm -hmm. You look like you're 30 and I know you're Thank not. You. Right. You have kept yourself very young mm -hmm. and that's amazing. And I think that's part of like, obviously, uh, being spiritually 
um, happy all the time and just this this particular way of living of like enjoyment keeps you really young, right? Yeah. When you're sure. when you're stressed out and when life is not a game anymore and it's full of barriers and drama, it's like mm -hmm. people get old really fast. Yeah. Or when, when you don't have work. Of it, right? Or when they don't have when work. you don't have any production. Yeah. Like I've seen a lot of people go downhill when they're not able to produce in life, right? Mm -hmm. So that's a big part of it. Okay, so I got a, a, another question for you in regards to your empire building, okay. right? Which is important. So particularly, you often talk about that moment. Uh, you talked about this several times uh, when you talked about it this weekend again. Things were collapsing between you and GC, and you sent him to write this book, right? Yep. Uh, you sent him to like go and figure it out. Mm -hmm. Go and sp get yeah, away I from here. Yeah, I didn't know he was going to write the book. I just right. sent him to figure it out. Until, right? yes. Right? And then he spent three hours in that room That's and he right. came out and he figured And he wrote a book. And wrote a book. Takes me eight, nine months to write a book, almost a year, him, three hours. I'm I about to kill to be, him, but I'm happy. I'm but. about to be done with my book, six How, months. See? Six months. Uh, he's just not, uh, you see what I mean, Elena? He's oh, just not human. I know. It's just like, how, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, it's hard to understand sometimes that speed, right? For yes. sure. Uh, but anyways, was there a moment or incident in your particular journey in which you realized this is what I got to do. I got to build an empire. Mm -hmm. This is going to be my, you know, uh, Grant has a 10x movement, right? And and that's a big push and that is a movement. But now you have your own movement. Yeah. Obviously, there's 10x ladies and a lot of the people that come to the 10x universe, they come into your universe. Right. But I think that it's getting to the point now that some people are coming directly to your universe. That's true. And that's flowing over there now. It's right? true. It's happening now. Yes. Which is a great, which incredible was my vision. thing. Right. That's what I wanted to have happen. So what was that moment for you in your journey in which you said, okay, I got to become Elena Cardone. I got to, I got to have my own. I'm going to keep on flowing power, supporting. I'm going to keep on doing what I do. That's right. But I want to be Elena. Right. So also with the vision that Elena being Elena Cardone is mm -hmm. going to flow all this power to Grant along the way, because that's the idea. You guys are doing this together. A moment in time? Yeah, a moment in time was when probably three years ago is when I got serious. Now, 2008 is when I had the concept of the empire, and that's what I helped construct for our vision. But when when you're asking me now, what about this ladies movement? That came around three and a half, four years ago. We were ha hosting a growth conference. The Pyromaniac one? The fire one? Uh, before that. So before that one? Yep. Before that was 2020. I think this was 2019. That was epic, by the way. And so all these ladies, because I wanted more ladies in, into GrowthCon, because when you go to GrowthCon 1, 2, and like 3, very there was manly. very manly, not a lot oh. of women there. And I said, we have to change this. His content is so good that I have to bring the ladies in. So I did a 10X ladies. It turned out to be very successful without a whole lot of attention on it. I, without a whole lot of promotion and whatnot. It was a very successful event. Then I repeated it year after year. Then the feedback kind of instructed me because the feedback was, what are you doing? And I thought what I was doing, everyone was doing. Right. Then I realized people don't know what I'm doing, which is very unique in how I, this whole thing came about and how we actually work together in a coordinated manner to reach a heightened level of totally. success together and what that took and how we had to be together and fortified to fight the enemies and the whole thing. So from that is when I really said, you know what, I have to write the, write it out for people to be able to have the information. And then last year was the first year I did all four workshops on this for the Build an Empire, the whole series. So, so powerful. It was really powerful. It makes a lot of sense because if you look at the biggest cause selected on uh, this is public information for divorces is irreconcilable differences. And what are you doing is you're getting on the same page. Mm -hmm. So you're helping all these people, couples getting on the same page. So not right. only is going to help their businesses succeed at a whole different level, Million it's going to keep the family together, together because you get to play. The reason why my wife and I, so we built businesses together. We didn't, when we got married in 2006, we I, I didn't even really understand what marketing was, business, none of that stuff. So we wow. had nothing, wow. right? I always tell her that, um, you know, um, I didn't even, People say that it didn't have money in the bank account. I didn't have a bank account. I was in Mexico City working for my church. She met me, beautiful, wow. incredible woman. I don't wow. know, how, how does she even like me? I don't know. And uh, we got married soon after. But along the way, what really made us stronger, first were the kids. 
That was the one thing that was like, okay, you know, we got to do something great. And then it was the businesses because then we aligned with this vision and we started working together and she's mm -hmm. a genius in her own right. Mm. I do my thing and then we complement each other really well and we do amazing things. But if you take that, I cannot visualize myself right now with her being on a very different page or right. like me getting home and she's like, oh, what happened today, honey? Well, you know, let's not talk about work. Mm -hmm. Let's just not cross that line, all right? Mm -hmm. Let's talk about home. It's, we talk about work. I know. That's the way it's it is. It's so exciting. That's the center focus of our attention. So it's a, it's a very vital thing. Like when you're finding a couple, mm -hmm. that person, can you really get on the same page with that person? Is that right. person somebody that's going to align? Because the, the, the group and what you're trying to accomplish becomes bigger than you as a couple. That's a bigger game. That's right. So it's like the group has to adjust to you. No, you have to adjust to the group. And they have to kind of like be, be aligned so you can actually play a bigger game. It's awesome. Yeah. You guys are a great example of that. Thank you. Okay. So we could talk about for hours and hours and hours, Elena. I want to respect your time and I want to thank you for being here with us today. Uh, do you mind if I rapid fire a few questions for you? No, go for okay, it. Okay. Because we, we have a lot of value to give, right? So this could be very long and I do talk a lot to myself. So let me ask you some quick questions that I have thought about. Okay. When did you recognize, because obviously you fell in love with, with GC, uh, you told your story over the weekend. I love hearing that story. You didn't really knew the GC was what GC is today, right? What right. Grant was, right? Right, that's true. When did you recognize that he was special? So obviously you fell in love with him, but at the level of like, oh, he's gonna do some big things in this world, which he is doing every day. Was there a moment in which you looked at him and you're like, wait a second, this guy, there's something different about this giant. Yeah, there. when when I first got together with him and, and the way he just was so persistent with me to get me to see who he was, that was impressive. And then there was a series of, I went and heard him speak at a seminar and I, and I heard his information and the way he delivered it and how funny he mm. was. And I come from an actor's background, so I can really see talent. And even though he's not an actor, I could see the talent mm. that he had and the way he communicates and the way he tells a story and how effective he is and how funny he is. So in that moment, I, I was blown away. And I, I'm, I didn't know you were an artist, Grant. Totally. I, you didn't, you, I thought you were, I mean, I know you're a business, but you're an artist. So that was one of the first moments. The second moment was when he was driving me around some of his properties. I thought we were going to go see a building that was a fourplex and that was his property. But then we ended up driving on to this complex that had multiple buildings with multiple pools and and he, he was like yes he owned it all wow. of the property that was that big was thing you kind of saw the thing yeah. and then i was uh, and then i thought oh my god this is this is big i like this but the one moment that really solidified it for me was in a past relationship that i was in when i was attempting to have relationships i remember telling this one guy that when he asked me, what did I want to do with my life? I said, I want to change the world. You know, I was young. I was in my twenties, but, but I still believe that even now at my age today. I'm well, like, good job on doing it, Elena, because you have changed the world. Thank you. And so he said to me, that's ridiculous. That's the problem with you. You always think like you, you're not realistic and you're this and you're that. And like, who says that? Who changed the world? How do, why do you even think so big about yourself? And, and I, I it didn't stay with him long after that. Believe me. But when I asked Grant in the very beginning of our relationship, I said, well, what do you want to do or whatever? And, and he said, I want to reach at this time, it was 7 billion people on the planet. He said, I want to reach 7 billion people on the planet. And wow. I looked at him and I had that moment of when I had told, you know, this guy I had been with that I wanted to change the world. And he thought that was too big. And when I heard him say he wanted to reach 7 billion people, I thought, I can do that. Wow. That's the think and the level that I'm at. And that's when I knew I was with my guy. He was special. I had never heard that before. That's he it. had audacity, he had courage, and he had vision. That was a full commitment right there. That was a full commitment. That just closed I was the like, deal. When he said, I want to reach 7 billion people, I was like, that didn't, that, that, 
that didn't scare me. Yeah, big thinking is a thing of its of its own. Mm -hmm. That's that's real. Like I, I consider myself a big thinker. And then uh, I sit with people like Grant. Like the other day, I was with Tom Cummins at my house, mm -hmm. and we were talking business strategies. And then he starts talking, and then I realize that I'm not a big thinker anymore. Mm -hmm. And he just takes my big thinking to a whole different level, right? So that big thinking is like you only you're only gonna get what you visualize. If you don't visualize it. Nothing is happening. Right. And these guys, you know, Grant, Tom Cummins, people that we get to see consistently, big thinkers are on another level. It's it's incredible. Yeah. So I get that. That's that's amazing. And then you you have the big thinking and then you realize how much more you should be doing. That's the thing. There's yeah. different levels of big think. So this last year we took a private charter um, through all the south of France, which was amazing. It was a bucket list item Grant's always wanted to do. It was a magnificent trip. We were on a 200 foot yacht. I saw that. All the pe It was incredible. I'm shopping. Someone's holding my bags. It's levels of think that I didn't even think about, right? And then you see your big yacht, your 200 foot yacht looks like a miniature next to the 400 foot yachts and the five that have crew of 50, not 15 or 16, right? <laughs> and then you see that there's two helicopters and then you see, oh, then you, you talk to the captain and the captain tells you, you know, the tender, the boat that's in the boat that takes them to shore, those are million dollar boats uh, and above in, the, in their own. But when the, when the yacht travels from Thailand to the south of France, it doesn't travel with the helicopters and the boat. So these owners have helicopters and boats in every location, like over in the Thailand area and over in France and then over by the States and the Bahamas. So there's three sets of two helicopters and the and, and these are levels of thought that I didn't even think about. Right. Or payroll for 50 crew plus the maintenance of the yacht. I mean, it's just levels of, okay, well, if you wanna have that life just to have it when you want it, where do you have to scale to and who do you have to know and who do you have to become? And, and, and then, you know, you question yourself, well, who needs all of that? Nobody, right. but why not? Because it's all made up anyway. And you're only here in this body for a certain amount of time. Why not go for impact? Why not be able to entertain presidents and the celebrities and the opinion leaders of the world and host them at a dinner on your yacht. Why can't you be that big or that quote unquote important or have that much influence? Wow. So yeah. it just, I thought I was a big thinker until that trip. And wow. after that trip, I challenged myself to go even That's bigger. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. It's goosebumps here. Cause it's like when you understand that reality, right? A couple of things that Grant talks a lot about. You don't know what you don't know. Number one, so you go out there and you see that and then you see this other world, right? And you're like, whoa, I need to go there. That's another world, right? right. So who do you have to become to, to, to be that person? Right. And the, you have to stretch yourself. Right. Yeah. You and have to be a different person than you are today. 100%. You know, and, and, and I don't believe that I'm going to go stretch and become worse. I think I'm only going to stretch and become better. So why not stretch and become better? Very important mindset. Yeah. The other thing that he talks about a lot from the early stages of Grand Cardone, who's got my money, right? Mm -hmm. There is a lot in this world that you can grab. There's a lot of pie for right. you to grab a major piece of it. Mm -hmm. Either you grab it or somebody else will. Totally. So why not grab it? Because people like you and me, people Are like Grand, people. we want to do so much good with it. It's not about buying gold brick bars and storing wealth. It's about creating movements, about changing right. people's lives. And right. Along the way, have fun. Right. But in the end, we're more interested in the impact That's of other right. people. We're, giving back. Yeah. How do we go in and change families? How do we go in and change the schooling system for the better? How do we go in and, and make a difference for the better? How do we get this education on marketing and sales and the people, the tools that people really need to know about running and operating a business. How do we get that in the people's hands? How do we exchange where we can all be winning and flourishing and prospering and not hating on each other? Yeah, it's a, it's a powerful thing, right? Waking up every day, feeling grateful for what we have and going out there into the world and, and trying to give better, back, trying right? to give back exactly. to the world. Let's I leave it, it in a better condition than when we arrived. I love it. Amazing, Elena. Uh, so 
a lot of the things that we talked about already, uh, you talked about your 8 billion people goal, mm -hmm. which is probably, not probably, I would say for sure, the largest goal that exists. Think about this for a second. Out of 8 billion people, nobody has a bigger goal than you guys. Right. You guys have the single biggest goal, which is to reach every single human on this planet, 8 billion people. You might have to adjust that once we get, once we get to 9 billion people, right? I know. I have to keep on adjusting Well, in that. 25 years... We have to, oh, so if you say we have 25 years to accomplish the 8 billion, providing no more come on, um, we have to reach 320 million a year. So insane that you're saying that because that was the question here. Do you have yearly goals? Have you broken it down into how many people you need to reach on a yearly basis? <laughs> yes. How do you set your yearly goals for this? Well, yeah, that was the question. That was the question. You see, you <laughs> like math. I've only learned to like math because Grant breaks everything down in math. And right. so it's just numbers. So now once you know what you have to do a year, then you can break it down to a day. We have to we have to have eight hundred and seventy five thousand impressions or people that we reach on a day and between so then what how do we get that it can't all be grant there's got to be grand 10x health cardone ventures empire 10x ladies uh university you cardone understand capital, cardone everything. capital so if we all go out the the cardone licensee why do you think we keep collaborating and partnering with people because we can't do it all ourselves so right. if we go get an army of people that are going to go push it out for us we can actually hit those numbers and Absolutely. it's not so unreal i love it it makes it rea a reality. It makes it a reality. Well, I think Grant talked about this weekend, 450 million views on YouTube so far for Grant Cardone, which is an incredible, mm -hmm. incredible accomplishment. Wow. I'm going to ask you one final question, Elena. And this is something that I believe in uh, with all my heart and the reason why I am here today, uh, because I have been focused on helping people build a legacy. Uh, that's what I did for my father. We built a legacy. Uh, mm. A legacy for me is uh, something that you're building that goes beyond your body. Uh, if you look at, yep. for example, my father, uh, we're still publishing thousands of times his content every single month. Wow. And it's still helping people, saving people's lives, educating them on the body, on health, et cetera. And it's still sustaining companies with like 200 employees. Wow. So it's a legacy. Two years past his body, he's still helping us survive, succeed, expand. So... That being said, what are your thoughts on the word legacy and what do you envision for your own legacy aside of grants? Again, a legacy is something that lives on whether your physical body is there or not. So I'm creating my legacy as I go, but I really want to be known for, I want to become the face of the new women empowerment movement, which really brings men and women together um, as a unit, working in a coordinated, collaborated effort together to reach success and to restore the family dynamic. So at the end of my life, if I am known for that and like, wow, she left her mark and this is how it affected and, and, and I'm somehow my materials can continue to go on. That's what I want to be known for. Wow. Amazing. Elena Cardone, if any uh, amazing ladies that are listening to this interview want to connect with you somehow, I know you have a text line now, but I know you're on social media more than ever. I'm seeing your posts more than ever. So you guys are doing a great job Thank with that. You. How do they connect with you? They can go to elenacardone.com and just see all the things and activities that I'm going and doing. Um, tickets to 10X Ladies or a Build an Empire Mastermind or this 10X Relationships uh, retreat that I have coming up. Or and you want to just find out what I'm doing, ElenaCardone.com. I'm ElenaCardone.com on all socials. So I, I do a pretty good job of responding. Amazing. I have myself and my team, but between the, the, the two of us, we get it done. Oh, I love it. So that's amazing, Elena. Thank you for your time. Thank you for the interview today. Uh, we're going to be wrapping up the interview here. If there's any uh, closing message that you want to share with the people that are listening to this interview, you can share it right now. Okay. So, you know, go out there, be great. You can build an empire. If you think you can, then you must and you should. Um, don't withhold yourself from 
from benefiting this planet. You know, don't withhold your products and services because you're scared or you don't have confidence. Do it in spite of the fear because your products and services could help somebody like me have a better life if I would have known about it. So tell me about it. Put yourself out there. Exchange your products and services. You know, live up to your full potential and allow the world to experience your greatness. Don't be stingy. Don't hold it back. Go out and build an empire. Wow. Powerful. Miss Elena Cardon, thank you for being here. So go out and build an empire. Connect with Elena if you have, if you really want to go down that journey. Hope that you enjoyed the interview. I'll see you on the next one. 